Oh, wow, they changed the instructions. All right, this meeting will be conducted. Well, actually, first of all, welcome everybody to the May 22nd regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board, also known as Greg Strange's 1,443rd uh, public and private meeting for the board over 17 years. Also known as, guess I should have got a life. No, but anyways, didn't plan that. So this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAP. To use Zoom, you'll need to use the link on the agenda, which is on the calendar front page of the town's website. Uh, during the public testimony portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raise hand function or the Q&A function, both found on the Zoom template. If you're joining only by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. B -b 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 business will be handled at all times uh, indicated on the agenda. Board members are asked to announce themselves when making a motion and a second so that it'll be clear to the audience and minute takers who made the motion, all votes will be by roll call. So to ensure we have a quorum, we will start off with a roll call. Greg Strange, present. Peter Deshane. Present. Mickey Wolf. Present. And Robert Stetson. Present. All right. And I should also announce um, that Mickey is an alternate member, but given uh, we uh, only have four, she will be participating as a full member tonight and for any further um, uh, hearings that uh, come up tonight. All right. So first up, we have a continued public hearing, 366 Center Street, Sedano Estates, a definitive subdivision plan. Anybody representing or? Yes, I was a little slow in promoting Todd and Mr. Sedino. Good evening, all. Greg, I can't say I remember that meeting 17 years ago, but um, I may have been there. <laughs> yeah, I think I got home late that night because of you asking for more waivers. <laughs> that sounds um, about <laughs> So, all right, so well, enough of this friendly banter. Um, how about name and address for the record, please? Uh, Todd Pilling, Pilling Land Surveying, 105 R Depot Street, Southeastern. Great, thank you. All right, the floor is yours, Mr. Pilling. Okay, last uh, meeting I presented, actually, let me share my screen. Um, I presented the subdivision that included a proposed way that would go next to the south of the existing home at 366 Center Street to access a new lot at the rear uh, of the property. There was some question last time we had a hammerhead cul-de-sac uh, turnaround at the end, and there was question about whether or not that created frontage because they were 90 degree angles. And the answer was that no, we couldn't use it as frontage. So we have changed it to a circular cul-de-sac, but we left the hammerhead turnaround for the fire department for ease of turning around fire trucks. It's also less impervious area than the full cul-de-sac. Uh, we also submitted an environmental impact report statement, which I had done and just had omitted uploading it, but it's there now. Um, and I think everything else we kind of talked about the last meeting, but anything you want me to go over, just say the word. Thank you. Uh, since I was not here, board members or Stephanie, anything you guys want to discuss? Um, the only comment I'd like to add, I'd like to point out the comments from um, the fire chief concerned uh, about the size of the hammerhead and wh whether or not um, he feels that it will be a tight fit for the fire apparatus and there, the potential exists that if this is approved, that if an emergency vehicle was to respond to an emergency at the site, um, they may have to drive off pavement during that response and would not be responsible for any damages that were incurred as a result. But that was for the hammerhead, right? Now there's a, it's been changed to a cul-de-sac? It's a paper cul-de-sac. They're still proposing to pave right. the oh, I gotcha. All right. hammerhead. Which I guess, oh, oh, go ahead, Peter, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay, go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, I, I know things change, people come and go, um, and I, I I think back to sort of consistency, you know, and I'm, 
I don't know. I, I've never been a big fan. I know some of the board members in the past of, of creating paper cul-de-sacs and then not not paving them. And I know uh, previous two fire chiefs despised hammerheads and we made everybody do cul-de-sacs. You know, now we're or if they had to go off the pavement, or if there was a question of the pavement was too thin, they would do structured, you know, pavement, you know, those uh, you know, the sort of cement blocks of the pavers that grass grows through as they grow in the grass. Um, so I guess I'm just curious, what do we just change? You know, are we cool with this the way it is? And that's, uh, we're going to do it. Or are we going to, you know, uh, are we going to go back to, you know, the next next time the, the next fire chief wants it done a certain way? I guess I just get worried about consistency because this does fall in, out of, or in, you know, the, the, the administrative or well, the subdivision rules of ranks. It's like, what, uh, do we think this is good planning and we're just going to do it? That's fine. Or just kind of some random thoughts. Well, I'll just, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think, I think like this, at the last meeting, it was brought up that when we have approved possibly one or two paper cul de sacs over maybe like 10 years or something, or maybe just one. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. It was up in the meeting, uh, and, I, and I think it was Mr. Pilling. And I thought the board swore they would never do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've never done a hammerhead before. <laughs> there you oh. go. The hammerhead. Well, either way, yeah, either a paper cul de sac. I'm talking about the paper road. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, my issue, I guess, was that your regulations require a 30 foot radius on that pavement. It was like a maximum of 30. And I know the fire trucks are like a 36 foot radius for them. So I would need a waiver from your regs to put in the cul-de-sac. So I agree with Mr. Strange, fire trucks are getting bigger. Fire chiefs change their mind, planning boards change their mind. Um, and I'm willing to do whatever we need to do to get there. We've got the extra area to make it happen. Um, so it's it's not a problem on our end. Uh, we're not trying to shoehorn something in. We're just trying to do something that works for the fire department and the applicant. So a bigger cul-de-sac wouldn't wouldn't um, you'd still have enough area for the lot? Yeah, because this is a forty foot radius circle, and again, your regulations right now are thirty. So if we went with like a thirty six, it would still fall within that circle. And who's going to own own the road? The the owner of lot B. Yes, it's a, a private way in perpetuity. Right. Just like the drainage basin will be maintained by the owner of Lot B also. Well, for what it's worth, and I'll be quiet after this, but my thought is if, and I even think of just livability, it's a dead end. So if someone takes the wrong turn or they have guests over or, or a fire department. I've watched this. We've made people put in, you know, really big things to, for, to allow the, uh, you know, the operation maneuverability that's what they want the fire trucks um does it make sense and I, I get we try to eliminate paving but it wouldn't be that much more do we go to a 36 foot radius and have them pave it or do we think that's overkill i think that would be the best plan for a like consistent practice going forward from from here yeah greg if if i could make um actually two comments sure one um if, if they don't, I mean, if they don't do the full radi radius on the cul-de-sac, it really is little more than a common driveway. And the other comment is Mr. Pilling answered that one of the lots was going to be held responsible for the right of way. You asked who would own it. And um, I, I guess that makes sense because the other property isn't served by it. Because this isn't a common driveway, right? Or no, I mean, you can't use a common driveway for frontage. So that, which is why. No, right, but, but lot A is not going to be, is lot A going to use this driveway? No. It's not proposed. I mean, because then we, then we need a different, no. then we need a different application if that's the case. But I, I just assume that that. I think, I think. Is staying. Yeah. And I think Stephanie's point is pretty well taken. I mean, if, if, if it's not going to be paved and if it's just going to have a hammerhead, then it's, then it's really nothing more than a glorified driveway, put aside common drive. And it's supposed to be a, a way. I mean, they're asking for a whole bunch of, of waivers, which is fine, but I don't, you know, if we're talking about safety issues, I, I tend to agree. I, I think that we need some, I need, I think we need some paving and, um, 
And I think that the cul-de-sac and, and paving the entire cul-de-sac, even if we're going to give a waiver for the, the full amount, makes some sense. So the waivers are over here on the left side of the screen. We're asking for uh, three lot waivers on the water main and one to get rid of the sidewalk and one to reduce the bounds from 42 inches to 36 inch bounds. So the road construction itself, there's no waivers on. Uh, other ex well, it's, it's not, you're getting rid of the sidewalks. Yeah, that's that's the waiver. Yes, the the one waiver from the street construction. Again, the water mains are looping the water main, and um, what was the other one? The the length of the water main. Um, but yeah, uh, Stephanie had has the fire department commented on the new um well. Like I said, it's a paper cul-de-sac here, so they haven't commented on that, so. Well, right, what they commented on was the paved area of the hammerhead did not appear, it appeared very tight, and that if they needed to respond to an emergency, it was likely that they would be driving off pavement and would not be responsible right. for any damage that was incurred. incurred. Mm -hmm. And not even considering like a, like you know during the winter when you know the plows might push a little right. snow back to like towards the back here, so right and and if so really um Todd mentioned the waivers that they're seeking, but they're actually also seeking a waiver of the construction or full construction to the standards for a cul-de-sac as well. Well, again, this is one of the choices for a cul-de-sac for a dead-end street. You can do a paved cul-de-sac, you can do a landscape island in the middle, or you can do a hammerhead. Okay, right. But then then now we have a paper hammerhead, right? I mean, so paper cul-de-sac slash hammerhead. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily exactly, you know, allow that or even any of the waivers in the first place. So, we don't have, we can make some reasonable, um, you know, conditions and, um, you know, you know, decisions here. So can I ask a question? Uh, what, what's the purpose of the easement? The original plan was 25 feet, now it's 30. Is that because eventually you're thinking of adding another lot to this in the back or what, what type, like what is this? It is not us that wants the 30 foot easement. It's the Eastern regulations that require a 30 foot easement for the extension of the street. And, and Greg, if I could add on to that. So I think you were asking for a way in the original waivers, you were asking for a waiver of that 25 foot easement or the required standard. And um, I made a comment that you have two landlocked parcels undeveloped immediately adjacent. So the parcel that's owned by James Magaldi and then the parcel immediately adjacent to that um, are landlocked. And by if the easement is waived, there could be no future, there might be no future development of those sites. So my understanding of those easements at the end of lots like that, at the end of stub um, off of a cul-de-sac was to provide the potential for future access to other, other lands for development. Yeah, there's actually two places in your regulations. One requires the 30 for the extension of the road. The other is 25 for utility looping for the future. And we had done the 25 for looping utilities um, and we upped it to the 30 for extension of the road. Okay, thank you. So it sounds like everybody's kind of on board with paving the cul-de-sac, right? Did I hear that correctly? Yes. For me, mm -hmm. same. Yes. Um, okay. So, um, are there any other? Should we just uh, continue this to the next meeting? Any other questions or comments from anybody? Or I, I have to I obviously reach out to the audience. Here, so. so maybe we just check with the fire department about the you know the minimum radius uh, for the an actual cul to turn an actual cul de sac, and then maybe then we could um you know communicate that with the applicant and they could revise their plans for the next meeting. I'm okay with that, unless, uh, but I'd like to know if there's anything else, obviously, because um, I don't want to waste your time either coming back again. So uh, anything else that anybody wanted to see? 
Uh, Greg, I just have one other comment. Go right um, ahead. If, if the board does issue a decision, um, the decision should include a condition that the um, the deed for the new parcel include responsibility for maintenance and repair of Sedino Way. Yeah, that's understood, so. And, and Is there anyone in the audience, um, any questions or comments? And that's Sedano Way and the drainage basin also. Yeah. Um, Anybody has nothing to add if we want to make a motion to continue to the next meeting. Motion to continue to the next meeting. Dishane. Second, Stetson. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor? Greg Strange, aye. Robert Stetson? Aye. Peter Deshane? Aye. And Mickey Wolf? Aye. Great. Thank you, Mr. Pelling. I thank you. Good night. And um, thank you for your long career, Mr. Strange. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> a career? Yes. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Next up. Uh, uh, why did I lose? I won't miss these online agendas. Well, is that? All right. Next up, we have continued site plan review, 661 Washington Street. Greg? Yeah. I am very sorry. Before we continue, I think the abutter to the Sedina Way project had his hand up. I did not see that. And there was no hand up when I did the second. Uh, okay. That's, All right. Thank you. But that's fine. If you want to quickly, uh, you want to call it up. Yeah. Do you want me to? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. N name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is James Magaldi, and I'm one of the abutters. And I just uh, have been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks since the previous meeting. And I just don't understand how, I, I believe Mr. Pilling had mentioned that he had done testing, soil testing all over that site, and that there was absolutely no ledge. I mean, there is so much ledge in this back land it isn't funny i put a swimming pool in you know like 50 years ago practically and uh they had to bring in a larger steam shovel to smash through all the ledge to do the swimming pool in my backyard and i gotta believe with all the ledge in that land when we get a really heavy rainstorm uh or in a you know a lot of these testings were done uh in a pretty heavy drought area last year i think it was in september of 2022 so i just publicly want to state that i believe that there is a lot of water runoff i don't think that retention pond up on the road on the far side of that lot uh is going to be able to do much and that, that the water is going to flow back down this way and as i mentioned uh back in 1972 71 when we bought this place and in the spring of 72, I ended up with a pond in my backyard. And I mean a pond that was at least, at least three, maybe more feet deep and practically came up to the back of my garage. And there was no way to get that water out of there. And that's when the planning board chairman, Ed McAdam, I believe was his name, eventually approved putting storm drains on Lantern Lane so that uh, I could dig a trench at least from that pond to the storm drain and eventually as I mentioned last time we put in we had to put in a four inch Orangeburg pipe to drain that pond to keep it drained and without that Orangeburg pipe I'd have that hundred foot or wider 
pond in my backyard every spring. It just never would never fail. So I'm concerned about the the land and the the wetness, and I'm absolutely against putting any another house on that lot. I'm just against it, and that's my feeling. And uh, I appreciate you allowing me to make uh, my comment, and uh, that's pretty much it for now. Okay, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate your your taking the time and your comment and. Uh, the next meeting in two weeks. Uh, this will be coming up again. Stephanie, do you have anything you want to respond to? So I think your point's taken, no. and, and I'd rather um, have that conversation when the applicant's back here. I think that's a better way to have the conversation than in the absence. Is that, that good with everybody? All right. I appreciate your time, sir. Thank um, you. All right. So next up, let's um, 661 Washington Street. <clears throat> Mr. Farrier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What's the good news? We're going to bring this baby home tonight or what? Well, unfortunately, I don't get to vote on these things, Mr. Chairman. It would have been done two months ago if I got to vote. Yeah, uh, so anyone has that available. Who are you kidding? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I uh, never believe an engineer that says that just do it on a napkin. That's right. Like the good old days. Uh, right. I have uh, Adam Silverleaf. There's Adam. And Attorney Marioni is on as well. Uh, here for 661 Washington Street, as you said, Silco Volkswagen uh, at our previous hearing. And if you would like, I'm going to share a screen. Go right ahead. There's the esteemed Councilor Marioni. All right. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, young man. All right. Do people see my screen? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, at least I can. Well, that's all that matters. You've really become tech savvy over the course of this project. You did it in under 20 minutes. In all honesty, Mr. Chairman, my tech savvy son is right next to me. I was going to say, one of your kids did it? Out of camera view. <laughs> you, you know what? You, your secret would have been safe. No. I know, I know, but you know, I, I can't I can't tell a lie. I can't tell what a lie. What is that a tough standard if your son wasn't around for all of your meetings, I guess? <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. All right, so... Uh, beyond all that, we had uh, our uh, original hearing with you folks uh, back maybe about six weeks ago, and uh, we had some comments back and forth, and I think our biggest issue uh, that we wanted to resolve with the board uh, was some screening along the residential properties on Depot Street and the need to have a site walk uh, to look at that proposed screening. Uh, at that point, as you recall, we had our site walk. Uh, we looked at the property, we decided, and I've shown it on this plan, uh, to increase the plantings in the areas where we have plantings. And in between the plantings, we are proposing an eight-foot stockade fence as opposed to a six-foot stockade fence uh, just to screen the property. So we're, we're screening the, uh, the entire side uh, right here at number 125, and then across the back and along the side uh, for house number 129. Now, 129 is way up on Depot Street, but they do have a large uh, grass area, so we did want to screen most of their property uh, from seeing the, the Volkswagen dealership. In addition to that, as discussed, we did propose a, uh, an eight-foot fence alongside the, uh, the daycare center uh, on Washington Street. So, so can I just interrupt you real quick, just, yeah. just while you're talking the fence? So, for example, on the... Western um, bottom of the screen. So is that fence going along that entire property line or just where you show it? The fence, we're ending it right here, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And the rest will be grass and then more trees around the corner uh, to shield the, uh, the condominium project on the side. Sure. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, so we feel like we resolved those issues. Uh, the other obviously big issue that we had was dealing with the uh, planning board's consultant uh, on the project, we've gone back and forth with Ms. Mr. Cheshire on the uh, primarily on the drainage, and uh, at this point, we have a uh, a letter from him, uh, basically giving us a blessing. There's there's a few conditions in there uh, that he suggested we make them as conditions of approval, mostly having to do with some uh, test pits that would be dug during construction, which is kind of a a standard thing nowadays, just to make sure when they're actually installing the drainage. Uh, that the soil we are putting the system in is, is the same that we 
that we attested to on the plans and, and that we are expecting to see just to make sure that the, the system works properly. So uh, those were his conditions. Uh, as I said, we're in agreement with all of the conditions that he had listed. Uh, the planning staff had a few, uh, a few comments. Uh, one was about lighting. We did submit a revised lighting plan, which hopefully addresses those comments. Uh, the stockade fence we talked about. One other issue, I guess, that we should mention was it was discussed at our first uh, public hearing that perhaps a school bus stop could be proposed on our property on Depot Street to uh, help the the four or five residences right in the uh, in the general neighborhood. And it's just the uh, Adam uh, Silverleaf did speak to his insurance agent about it. And it's, it's just something that uh, that we can't do on our property. We just can't build a, a school bus stop on our property uh, for liability reasons. So unfortunately, we're uh, we're just not going to be able to to help out on on that issue. Uh, Can you give them any free cars? Um, I if it was me, I would say yes, we could do that. But it, I'm not sure. If on, tells me that's not your on the scale of the car, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Matchbox cars, probably. Uh, so I think that was that was really it, Mr. Chairman. That was uh, the majority of the comments, I think, from the board, from okay. the consultant, and from the planning staff. So if there's any other questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, Stephanie, do oh, you have anything? No. No, nope, they've answered all my questions. So quick question before I turn to the board. So when, when we did that site walk, I had pitched the idea of the eight-foot fence because right. given, given the uh, existing topography. Um, and so do you know, when they go to do, I, I, I recommend they put it on the plan. I know six foot is the maximum in town. And then eight in the old days, I don't even know how Kevin does. In the old days, it used to be sort of a special permit. You want to go, is that, does that get, does this plan, if we approve this with eight foot fence, does that supersede or does, do they still have to do that? I believe they still need that. I, I, th I believe it's part of the, um, I, I want to say building code. I, I don't know that it's the building code, but I do think that they need to review and approve a fence over six feet tall. So we can put it in a, well, we don't have a decision. This is just safe. Okay. Um, well, just a heads up. You may have to talk to. Understood. Uh, Mr. Yeah, we could like specifically approve the eight foot fence as part of this site plan and that might help the process along. Right, yeah, I, no, exactly. That's right, yeah. I think that the, the board approving the plan with the eight foot mm -hmm. fence. Right. And even note the eight foot fence in the decision or something, right? We'll require it that way. If we require the eight foot fence in those locations, then it's pretty clear that, you know, but, okay. Agreed. Now, what about um, what about Greg's um, mile marker monument um, there? Is that in the corner there still? It's on, um, it's on the abutter's land. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. I did, I reached out to a couple um, members of the Historical Society and Historical Commission and mm -hmm. said that they wanted to try to, talk to the neighbors or whatever, explain it and see if we could do something. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the uh, I think that's probably just going to stay where it is. Okay. Could we, um, is it okay time to look at the uh, photometric plan, the revised photometrics? Sure. That's the drainage plan. Unfortunately, Mr. DeShane, I don't believe I have it as part of my plan site. Right. I have it. Okay. I believe it came in because my okay. report indicated you hadn't provided the lighting detail. Um, and I think it so came it's actually out. a separate file because I clicked on that one first and I was looking at yeah. it. Like, was like, if, you wanna, if you want to stop sharing your screen for a moment, Scott, I can bring mine up. Gladly. Thank you. Sorry about that, folks. No, it's uh, from 428.23, right? There it is. Can you see it? Yep. Yes. So what were the major changes that you made to this lighting plan? Uh, the changes we had to add, uh, we had to add a few lights to come into compliance with the maximum 250 watts. Uh, I believe the, the previous plan we had, I, I believe it's, it had a thousand watts. Uh, 
So by shrinking it down to the 250, we had to add a few, uh, a few light structures. So that's what we've done. Uh, it still has the same dock sky compliant uh, specifications that, that are always part of your regulations and also show that there's no light uh, being shed on the abutting properties. Okay, and then either this um, page of the plan or the um, the regular plan set indicate that the lights will be dark sky compliant. Or they they will by the time we uh, have plans if we were to sign something. I'll specifically add it to my utility plan. Yes. Great. I believe it was part of his specs, but not on the plan. So I'll make okay. sure I get to the plan. Okay, those are all my questions. Thank you. No comments. Any other board members, questions or comments? Uh, anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? And so, Stephanie, well, I wait to see if anybody chimes in. Um, in terms of what Mr. Ferrier was discussing, um, conditions for approval brought up by peer review uh, and a couple of small things. Are we, seems like we're fine if everyone made a motion to approve this and then that, that information could come in later. On the, right, on later and as part of the decision. These are pretty standard stormwater um, conditions. Right. Um, all right. Well, anybody care to make a motion? Motion to approve the site plan at 661 Washington Street, Stetson. Second, Wolf. Any further discussion? And I'm not losing my site plan review, so there really won't be a decision. We no decisions are issued for site plan review. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Guess I never saw them in 17 years. <laughs> all right. Um, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor. Strange eye, Stetson. Aye. DeShane. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Well, that's it. There's so many people on the screen, but that's it. All right. Well, good luck, gentlemen. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much. Adam, I look forward to seeing that retro VW up in the mezzanine. <laughs> you will, will uh, it will be easily accessible. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a photo shoot with you in it. Oh, uh, <laughs> make sure the so, cars, let's make sure we crop that a little bit. You know, we can bring it in and scale. Yeah, all right. It's, well, it's gentlemen, really thank you. Know, this is, I, I do want to say one thing that this, you know, we, this board, we have a long history with this site going back like five or six years. And it looked pretty dire um, in the last year or two. You know, Stephanie knows her, her and I had met with all sorts of people, also, you know, trying to trying to um, save what had been proposed. But you know what? It's nice. This is going to be a great shot in the arm um, for that part of town. So I thank you for investing. Um, and this really is going to that. So part of town is sort of no man's land. It has lots of little lots in there, but wetlands. And we all know what that means in Easton. But um, I, I feel still, it'll be nice to. Uh, it will, it will embolden, embolden some of the abutters, I think, to invest in their property and uh, get really improve what's become kind of a blighted part of town. Um, and you know me, I'm all for the aesthetic. So I appreciate your investment and uh, I look forward to seeing you up the road. So good luck. We, we feel very fortunate to be stewards of this property and to be part of the, um, you know, we'll call it the, the re reboot of that section of road. So thank you. Amen. Well, All right. Great. Operation. <clears throat> Thank right. you, folks. Thank good you, luck, everybody. Guys. Have Mr. a good Thank night. You. Mr. Chairman, good luck with your uh, retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if my uh, lovely bride will let me call it that, but I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> have Thank a good you. night. It'll be fun to have my life back. I do I do look forward to that. So thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Good luck. All right. Um so, all right, next we received a request to continue to June 12th of 2023 from 518 Washington Street, site plan review for home engineering congregational congregation of the Holy Cross. Anybody care to make that motion? 
Motion to continue um, 518 Washington Street to June 12th. Second, Stetson. Um, any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor, strange aye. Wolf? Aye. DeShane? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, it's going quick. I guess I'll do this public hearing. I have something. All right. Uh, 537, public hearing, 537 Turnpike Street, special permit duplex, 23-301. Peter, I assume you want to read us in? Um, yes, sir. Town of Easton, notice of public hearing. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter 40A, Section 9, Section 11, MGL, and the Eastern Planning and Zoning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 22nd, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. to be held remotely on the application received from PMP Consulting, Inc. on behalf of Yang Li for a special permit duplex dwelling under Eastern Town Code, Chapter 235, Zoning 235-56, special permits to allow the creation of a duplex dwelling located at 537 Turnpike Street, Easton, Massachusetts. Assessors, map 55U, lot 12. This meeting will be conducted remotely via Zoom. The virtual meeting link will be contained within the posted agenda at least 48 hours in advance of the meeting. A copy of the application and plan may be viewed on the town website. This notice is also available at masspubliknotices.org. Greg Strange, Chair. Wonderfully done, Peter. Thank you. All right. Um, so, Stephanie, have we called up where it was coming? Yes. Um, Ed Jacobs is right. speaking. But All right. Well, Mr. Jacobs, just name and address for the record, please, and the floor is yours. Edward Jacobs, PMP Consulting, Inc., 200 North Bedford Street, East Bridgewater. Um, Ed, could I just ask a question? Do you have... The applicant with you, there's a Sarah with her hand raised. Is that? Um, it should be Miss Lee. Is there a Miss Lee here? Hung Lee? Oh, I don't see Miss Lee. Appeared. Okay. No. Okay. Um, Chairman, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, as I said, my name's Ed Jacobs and I'm here representing Miss Lee for a special permit application to um, could I share my screen? And then we can uh, see what I'm talking about here. Sure. Can you see that? Maybe zoom in a little bit on that, please. Is that better? Can you see the screen? Yeah, that, that, that is more, yeah, that's clear enough. Okay, so this is 537 um, Turnpike Street on the west side of the road, uh, which is Route 138. It's just, um, it has a um, existing um, house in disrepair, a single family home and an existing um, detached garage that's also in disrepair. Um, those total um, about 2,244 square feet. Um, those are both being raised uh, to make way for this um, proposed duplex. The lot is um, 41,920 square feet. It has 177.65 uh, feet of frontage. We are requesting to, um, as I said, raise those houses and put up this duplex. Um, each unit will be 40 feet wide, 32 feet deep. Uh, for a total footprint of 2,560 square feet. Each unit will have a two-car garage in the basement, at basement level. Um, two new driveways are being proposed off of Route 138. Uh, right now, we're showing those at 22 foot wide. Um, we had comments back from um, Ms. Danielson to um, narrow those down at... Um, at the roadway at 138 to 12 foot wide, which we have no problem with. And if you look at the north driveway right here, there's two trees that would have to come out. And Ms. Danielson also uh, requested that we, and taking down those two trees, we replace those um, somewhere else on the street line. And we have no problem doing that as well. Um, and as I said, we've got two driveways. Uh, it's um, 
garage is a driveway uh, at um, basement floor level. We have a septic system in the back. We have room for the uh, reserve off to the side on associated grading. And that's pretty much the uh, project. As I said, it's on the west side of um, Turnpike Street. It's surrounded by condos to the north and into the rear, and it has a four unit apartment building uh, just to the south of it. And um, I'll just entertain any questions that you may have. Okay, uh, board members, questions? Um, is the grading indicated on the plan, is that the extent of the grading on the entire lot or will the septic system most likely um or you haven't done any any septic um you know we've, exploration yet so i don't know how that yeah well we've done we've done percolation testing um and whether they um are going to be mounted systems or not i don't know that at this time okay and um you don't have any do you have like well we can look at it later but do you have like a, any like proposed like house plan yet or is the site plan on what you yeah. have next bar. Yeah, they're in, the, they're in the file. Oh, they are in the folder. Okay, I did. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I can um, I can put those up if you'd mm -hmm. like. But yeah. Well, what does the rest of the board think about like the the two driveways or possibly like one driveway with kind of two connections to the two units? Well, I'd like to take it back for a second, Peter, if you don't mind. Um, and I'm just wondering. Um, and now I'm putting my historical commission hat on. Mm -hmm. Um, but this house. Um is uh, obviously has to go through demo delay. I, I don't know if there's, I, I don't think there's been any conversations with historical yet. Uh, and it's nope. actually, it's it's listed in the uh, the Mass Historical Society inventory um, as being um, eligible for, um, for preservation. So I'm just wondering, I guess kind of concerned given how things work now um, and the folks that have seen this, why this hasn't come I, I would like to have seen this go to planning for I'm planning to to historical first to talk about um this house. I know, yeah, maybe it's in disrepair. That's not always how it's viewed by uh um by historic members. And this has been uh part of town that have been looking to save things in. So I'm just wondering, and typically the practice has been we've gotten some feedback from historical uh prior to approving a project that's gonna take it, that's gonna demolish, you know, kind of because otherwise we're not really allowing them to have their uh, their statutory yeah, say. Setting. Right, I get it. Greg, and if I could just again add to that, in fact, this is listed as the original toll house for Turnpike Street. Yeah, it's the Taunton South Boston Turnpike Toll House built in 1807. And here's the macros sheet right there. But anyways, um, so, you know, in the past, be, ooh, wouldn't it be nice to save the historic house and maybe attach a historic look to it or something or but or or just save it as is or if it has to I mean, whatever this board decides but I, I think it's i think it's wrong if we don't at least hear from historic on this because why why else have the system set up to operate like that if it's not going to operate like that okay uh, but board members what do you this is my last night so what, what do you that think? sounds like a great idea to me <laughs> <laughs> okay i'd agree and i'm sorry you know and i'm sorry that this hasn't happened ahead of time i wish you that you know i don't we don't try to hold things up um but i think it's uh i do think it's an important step to at least have a conversation with them and i you know i spoke with a the chair of the historical commission uh a couple of days ago about it and he, yeah he hadn't uh he hadn't heard anything about it so um might not be a bad idea give him a reach out Okay, I don't have a problem doing that. So is the next step we continue this or what do we do? Yeah, with this anybody else have any other questions or comments? We'll try to... or do it. Should we put it on hold till we hear from them? Continue. So, Greg, because it's a special permit, um, I, I don't know how soon Mr. Jacobs can get before the Historical Commission, but I would suggest continuing to a date certain, even if it needs to be continued, just so that 
we don't have to have the applicant re-notice and do another sure. legal notice. So you want to continue it out two weeks or I mean two meetings or how do you want to, or one meeting, whatever, whatever you guys want. I think probably two meetings, if you don't mind. Sure. That'll give me time to uh to reach out to them and you know. Right. Uh, do we have the date? Anybody have that date? Two June. meetings would be January and I'm sorry, June 26th. Correct. Hear me, Stephanie. June 26th. June 26th. Okay. So motion to continue to uh, June 26th. Second, Stetson. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, strange aye. Mickey Wolf? Aye. Peter DeShane? Aye. Robert Stetson? Aye. Great. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, A and R six forty six 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 Washington Street. J K. Holmgren Engineering. I don't see Scott. It looks like he jumped off. So let's deny it. Um, but the board can't deny an A and R. Uh, stick with the rules. <laughs> um, but I mean, certainly the. Yeah, board, we can handle. Yeah, we don't. We yeah, don't. Uh, yeah. It wasn't that. Don't even. Right. Questions, comments on the A and R? Anybody? Looks pretty straightforward. If I yeah. I what are the ideas for this? If there are, are there any ideas for this, or are they just doing for the? Um, to, um, I've heard nothing. I don't know. I've I've heard nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. So right now, lot. Well, the we'll say what is going to be lot A extends farther over to kind of the edge of the um, closer to the to the gas pumps. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Let me let me share my room. screen and I can show that. Right. So lot A is um, being enlarged and lot this is, B, yeah. Um, um, right. This is the previous lot line, so it looks like it shared it with the with the gas station yeah. lot. But then lot B still. Um, has sufficient um yeah and area yeah i think it was one lot to begin with right oh i thought it yeah i thought it was one lot but there is you can see right here there's a previous lot oh yeah yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right there's that dash line over by me. right so really it, it looks like it's dividing them off into two lots which would mean it would become more conforming oh no actually no the previous lot line is going through the building right um, yeah. Oh, you have right. it. That's what you mean. Oh, so maybe that maybe the other one's another previous lot line, or, or just indicating. So I, I, yeah, it looks like what it's doing is making each lot, lot more conforming. All right. Yeah. At least it's like separating the two, so they're not kind of so the existing, so the DeAngelo's building isn't on two properties, or something like that. Right. I don't have yeah, any. I, I don't think I had any other comments on that, Greg. Okay. Motion, anyone? Motion to endorse the ANR plan as presented. Second, Stetson. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor, strange aye. Peter DeShane? Aye. Robert Stetson? Aye. Mickey Wolf? Aye. All right. That passes that. And let's see, where are we at here? 560 Foundry. 560 Foundry. Yeah, you know what? I'll stay. So this would be good for me to finish. This this would be my last meeting I ever do. I, I, I thought you were just gonna, gonna you. stay around for that. Just this by law. Let's no 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 no. Uh, this is I, I didn't know you would miss that for your life, you know, after right now, after all your work on that. <laughs> it's three years of waiting. I didn't have any fingernails left. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Lincoln, name and address for the record, please. Lincoln, 4 First Street, Bridgewater. Welcome. 
and looking at this intimidating file size from the project, I'm not even going to try to find anything. Um, what are you here for? <laughs> final final review done. of architectural is right on the houses. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Yeah. Architectural review. Okay. Everybody in there. I know they're under building envelope designs. Everybody take a peek at them. Pretty much everything we kind of preliminary reviewed along the way, right? Approved, I should say. But Mr. Linking being the the diligent person that he is to work with has come in and wanted to have us have one last peek now that his construction documents are complete. Greg, I don't know if Rick's prepared to share his screen, but if not, I can share mine. I was hoping you would offer that, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with that, sorry. So would you like me to do that, Greg? Yeah, go yes. ahead, sure. Um, yeah. So, what are the what are like they say like the um, like the siding and the um, and the trim materials that you that you have for most of your structures here? So we haven't decided. So it's um, Azac trim, mm -hmm. you know, fascia and corner boards and things like that. Is that Azac um, um, Azac vinyl PVC. vinyl trim like or Azac like the fake wood trim? It's like a PVC. Okay. Right. Yeah. There, there is a vinyl, you know, which is mm -hmm. a step down for sure. Yep. It looks um, like a piece of wood, but it's made out of vinyl. Yep. I exactly. It. Yep. It's actually more expensive than than pine. Oh yeah. Um, and the fronts, the front elevations, um, uh, the worst case would be like a cedar impressions, which is, which is a vinyl shape, uh, shingle look. Uh, what I think I'm, I'm leaning towards is a, um, it's a, there's a new product out in the last few years and it's, it's a individual, uh, it's like a single shake shingle, which is like a solid composite. Um, it's actually quite expensive, but as you can see the front elevations on these houses, uh, there's not a lot of square footage and I think it would make a a dramatic Im impact. I don't know if you've seen that product, Greg. It's see, yeah, certainty, you, certainty makes it. I think it's called Sawmill. I, yeah, I'm actually using it right now in a, a project in Melrose. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's expensive, but everything. Yeah, it's expensive. expensive. Yeah, you don't want to do the whole house with it. So the sides would be like a, a, a heavy, like a what they call a 0 .044, a little heavier than 042 vinyl clapboard. Uh, and the rear would be that also. Um, uh, the decking is all like a like Azac uh, white vinyl, you know, post and rails, and uh, the decking is Azac, and of course the substructure is you know pressure treated, um, like a thirty year, you know, maybe a forty year roof shingle. Um, typically, I'll go in and try and master plan and pick all the colors. I think I'm going to avoid that on this one, let people uh, make their selections, but, you know, final approval. Um, so they're not, nothing crazy goes in. Uh, but I kind of like stuff mixed up. I, you know, I don't know how the board feels about that. But, I, you know, I've, we've all seen developments where it's like either all gray or all earth tones. And I just, I, I, you know, personally, I think that's kind of boring. But um, again, I, you know, we don't, don't want any crazy colors, but I, I don't think I want to discourage like dark colors either. So you actually, so you actually kind of like, so you have the, you're building the homes, but then like the, the, the buyer can choose, like what, what can they choose? Like the color or like, can they, they could change the materials if they, if they wanted, you know, if they I, were, yeah, to an extent. Is that to an, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to vary it too much, but colors for sure. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, looking at this elevation, I, for, I I wouldn't be opposed if somebody wanted to uh, upgrade to, for instance, like a black wrought iron, you know, across the deck wouldn't be a huge upgrade, but I think that would be a real pretty look. Um, but I, I don't think we want anybody doing, uh, you know, for instance, any natural wood. Most people shy away. You don't really get, I don't get requests like that anymore anyways. Most people are kind of like low maintenance. Um, the windows have all been selected, 
Um, there may be some folks that want to go with the black uh, muttons, which I did on that uh, that Eastendale Cottage development. I don't think I'd be opposed to that. I don't. I think it would. Uh, the variety would look fine. Um, but right now, it's spec'd out as white. Yep. And the windows would have what what I'm calling since I don't know exact term that the um, the the fake window panes or whatever whatever those are called. Um, is that like? Is that part of like the concept or is that just like like up to the buyer's choice or what? It, that The windows would be grills between the glass, mm -hmm. we call them. Yep. Uh, the ones I did across the street on Foundry, we, we, actually, we actually spent a lot of money. That's called simulated divided light. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Where you actually have hard grills on the outside and the inside. That, that gets really expensive. Um, but, you know, Foundry Street was um, high profile. Yeah, there's an elevation. It was historic. Hist yes. <laughs> so there's an elevation right there um, where it's got the the black um, windows, you know, with the white white casing, and I, I, you know, I think that looks nice. That's cool. What about yeah, see the the clubhouse is that like an actual is the clubhouse rendering like actually like something like what it would look like with a chimney and the um, the the cupola type thing at the top. I know that's in here. Yeah, there was a separate. Right, we did, we did yeah. include that. It's in there. It should be in there somewhere. I think I it's, it's, it's at the end. Hold yeah. on, I'm trying to get there. There were quite a few. Yeah, I saved the best for last. Right. Yeah, because that's kind of like out front, right? That's one of the more prominent. Um, Correct. Right. Yeah, and just as you're scrolling that down, I know. Oh, there it is. Yep. Let me zoom in on that. No, I was on older. And ones. what kind of trees are those? <laughs> Red maples. I think the artist artist took some liberty liberties. Yeah, no, it looks nice, but that that's honestly that's a rendering of the landscape architectural plan. But it might take a few years to get to that point. <clears throat> and there aren't going to be any uh, power lines, right? Or are those on Foundry Street? Yeah, uh, those on Foundry. Uh, yeah, power that's Foundry. Power to my house. That's right, yeah. Unfortunately, oh, they will be there. Can I ask a question? Since this is my last meeting, but I, I heard something that kind of troubled me. So I'll, I'll just say this to the board, and or, or Stephanie or Rick, you can correct me or something. But, but I had heard that there is... Um, a delay in reviewing the uh, intersection, the design outside with the light, and that it might not be ready, in that lights might not be installed by the time there's occupancy. So I think back to, so is, is that correct, first of all? Did I hear right? Anybody? anybody that's, I think that's incorrect. Um, the town, I think, is, so we've submitted, you know, we had draft plans in for a long time. Uh, we've since submitted, we being my, uh, my traffic engineer, we've since submitted our version of final plans. And I think that the town's peer review engineer is going to take one last look at it. Um, my folks don't see any changes, uh, you know, or small changes. I mean, so if we do get it back relatively soon, um, it might be up to DPW as to, they, as to whether they want to see it in this fall, but I hope they do because I'd like to like to try and get that light in as soon as possible. Uh, I have sent the road construction out to two firms, and and both of what one is the the uh, site contract site contractor I have on site. So um, I know I can have a site contractor ready. I did send the traffic light out to bell traffic for the third time you know because we've had this one going for a long time and they're just kind of revising their bid from a price standpoint but they've suggested that they don't they won't have any delays um that most of the construction on the road widening i'll call it is fairly simple it's all just being a, you know it's widened in our property that is now uh, an easement owned by the town um, there is a little bit of drainage I saw on the plans, you know, so that that takes a little more time, but I'm talking like four or five catch basins, not not a lot. 
And then uh, my paver is all lined up in the fall, T.L. Edwards. So uh, it can happen, but I, I don't have the final approval yet. Okay. So I know because the only reason I ask, um, and I, I'll say this to the board, and I'll, I'll say this to, to Stephanie as the director of planning. You know, way back when we first looked at this project, e even before uh, Mr. Lincoln was involved, we're like, okay, and, you know, we couldn't really approve anything was out of light there. We knew how tricky it was. Um, so when I heard that there may be a delay, I was like, well, you know, and if there's going to be, if, if I just saying, if a situation arises where there's occupancy of units prior to that being done, I would hope as a citizen who lives in this area and worried about the safety, I would hope that maybe the board would have the ability to, to maybe say it should be a right turn only coming out of there until the lights are on. Because it's just going to be a nightmare. Uh, it's going to be really dangerous too. So ho hopefully the people that are, that have the review of things can, can get it done so that Mr. Lincoln can do his stuff. But if, if not, I just hope you guys, again, I'm just saying this as a citizen, I hope you look at it and. Uh, right yeah. Now. So Greg, I've not, I've not heard that there's a delay at all. I know that in fact, um, Greg Swan was pushing to get the peer review funded, which has <clears> been done. And um, the reviewer was on board as soon as we said, gave them the go ahead, which has already occurred. I can follow up. I am i don't know where you heard that. And I'm wondering if someone is conflating that with the bigger, longer term project for Boundary Street. But again. No, there wasn't. It was this. It was, I heard it inside town hall. No, no big deal. I just came up in conversation. Okay. Yeah. And I just thought, I just wanted to bring it up and say, if that happens, look, I understand things happen, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I just think okay. we should, you know, yeah. allowing left turns out of there without a light is going to be a nightmare. Um, yeah, that may, that makes sense. So I'm making a note of that too. All right. About having a right turn signal if it does get delayed. Mm -hmm. so, so how are you guys all good with these plans? Any questions, comments? Looks like you've done. Yeah, yeah I was going to say on the, on the clubhouse, um, I would say the clubhouse and the other buildings, like is like the, any like the air conditioning or like a heat pump that would all be like ground level, like an exterior type thing. You know, just like plopped on top of the roof or... It won't be on the roof. Um, yeah. Hopefully, at least on the clubhouse, we can hide it. You know, there's a mm -hmm. there's a, enough vegetation, and it would be yeah. one mm -hmm. heat pump. Yeah. Um, on the houses right now, I'm thinking about going 100% geothermal, so you wouldn't see anything. You know, they're just they're just wells in the ground, um, closed loop wells, I should add. Uh, so, um, I again on the clubhouse, it would be just one heat pump. So not not a lot of square footage there inside. New build the new building code gotcha. Not yet, but it will. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, just let me back up on the light one more time. Uh, um, it may be an oversimplification, but one of my thoughts was I'd have to talk to the traffic signal guys. Is it's kind of a a string system. Um, with with the uh, posts, because uh, I think something more permanent is coming down, you know, the road with the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the full blown project someday. Uh, I kind of wondered, um, and I will ask the question, if there's any kind of delay on site work or drainage in the road or whether, whether we could string the uh, system up and get the light up, even though we're not done in the road. So at least there's a light there. Uh, you won't have turn lanes, you know, if, if the paving isn't done, but, you know, that's, um, we could potentially do that. But I, again, I'd have to ask the, the traffic guys and the, uh, and the traffic signal folks. Right. But you've been in contact with that, you know, the, the town departments, right. And it's in your best interest, obviously, that to have a safe and um, effective, you know, egress from your property. Right. So, so that's something that's kind of on the top of your mind. I, I assume where you could, um, at least um, from your end, kind of keep that moving along or make sure it's safe for you. Yes, sir. New bias, yeah. All right, so um, any more questions? I see we have one thing in the audience. Any questions or comments before I go to the general public? Oh, okay. Um, Stephanie, you want to call up uh, Maria Wilson, please, and thank you.
Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, name and address for the record, please. Maria Wilson, 16 South Street. I just wanted to um, talk about the lights a little bit further and to make sure, because we were told last year that they were gonna go in the spring of this year and traffic is really backing up onto Quantico and anything that anyone can do to move that along would be greatly appreciated. Or if we need to send emails to help move it along, that would be great. I mean, I'm happy to do that as well, but um, we really do need a light there sooner rather than later. That's my only comment. Okay, thank you. Stephanie, anything? No, no. I can as a fellow resident of that area. But. Yeah, I and, and I I agree. And as I said, it was I have not heard that there will be a delay, so that's on my list. I've already noted it to follow up and find out yeah. if, if right. something. Yeah, Ms. Wilson, I would say sure. I would email yeah. uh, email. Sorry, Stephanie, the, the planning department. All you want on that one. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I will. I'll be a citizen in about two minutes. I'll start doing the same thing. So we definitely need that. Yeah, later. that's. I will definitely find out what's going on. Great. Okay. Um, any uh, quick? Any other questions or comments? If not, I will accept a motion. Motion to approve the architectural drawings. That's a shame. Uh, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor, Greg Strange, aye. Mickey Wolf? Aye. Peter Shane? Aye. And Robert Stetson? Aye. All right. It passes. Mr. Will, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Lincoln, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Good luck. Congratulations and thanks for everybody's time. All thank right. You. Get that light up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try. All right. Um, all right. So I'll keep this quick. This is Greg Strange. So after 17 years, um, I have decided to resign from planning board. Um, I'll explain it more in my letter to the board of selectmen. This is not. Oh, on, on a side note, in case folks didn't know, our zoning amendment that we have proposed this year. We had two typos that we had the, the zoning amendment changing the quantities of apartment housing. That was um, shot down at town meeting. The, the selectmen, I met that night on it. They voted against it. And I know, I so I, I actually left that night. <laughs> and um, the reason, I, um, and uh, it was, it went down to a counted vote, but I, I guess it missed by about 17 votes. I know a lot of people in town are upset about it. They've been calling me endlessly, but uh, they don't, you know, is what it is. Um, you know, so when I when I um, accepted my fifth, my fourth five year term last year, I didn't think I'd be not seeing it to its end. Um, you know, but unfortunately, um, as the chair of the planning board, more and more, I was just excluded um, from things that appointed citizens and those who lead them have, have been included in in the past. Um, and I made my case known to the powers that be. I tried many approaches. I tried the delicate approach. And, I, and on the other, I tried the hammer approach um, to, no, to no avail. So um, as Kenny Rogers sang many years ago, you, you got to know when to fold them. Um, I love this town. I'll always stay interested in it and evolve, but it's time to, it's time to step back. Um, and like, I wasn't kidding before. I did over 1,400 meetings because you know, I log all my time for billables. And uh, um, I'm really proud of the work, um, the 13 years I've been chair, the 17 years on the board that we've done. We've written some really um, creative zoning. Uh, we, we were the first ones to get affordable housing payments for small A affordable. We brought in architectural review, uh, worked with six town planners um, and many you know, board of selectmen and, and, and many board members. So I wanna thank the citizens who indulged me all these years. Um, please don't show up at my door anymore unannounced because I'm, uh, I'm officially unplugged. Um, but if you ever have a question, you can always reach me. And um, to all the board, I think we had something like 62 board members in all these years. So it's been, it's been great. I love this town and um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sure I'll see you cats around. Mickey, keep up the good work with historical and also I'm taking a break from everything I need to get away so 
Um, I thank everybody. Stephanie, thanks for your time. It wasn't always easy for us. I've known you probably the longest in town, you know, but unfortunately this, it's probably happening in all towns. It's certainly happening in Easton where more and more the sort of the municipal machine just takes over everything from the, from the citizens. And, and some people on boards might think I'm crazy and that's not the case, but at least on the boards I'm on, I've seen that. And, and, you know, I've spoken to everybody about it. I've been trying to, to ebb that flow because I don't think it's good. I think we need to stay the special town that we are. And I think the residents need to have a say through appointed and elected officials and through just showing up. Um, but that is getting harder and harder to do. Um, I hope that changes. Um, but you know what, when your most stressful thing in your life is you're volunteering and then it's time to be done. So I thank everybody and I'll see you around town. And, uh, um, I bid you adieu. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Bye-bye. Okay, so um, uh, for tonight, at least I'm the vice chair. Um, I think we'll do some reorganization um, at the next meeting when we have some more members. Um, so we can uh, continue on here. We only have a couple items on the agenda. And as discussed at the beginning of the meeting, um, we are not going to review MBTA zoning um, since now we only have three members present and it's, a, it's kind of a, a, a large, important process. So right we have up next, um, in that case, is 95 Highland Street MBL Land Development Preliminary Plan Presentation. Stephanie, do you see any? Um, Brian Dunn is here. Andrews? Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Stephanie, if you could uh, let uh, Tracy Duart from my office into the meeting, as well as uh, the client's attorney, Brianna Herrera. Um, once everyone's here, if you could just um, introduce yourselves and um, yes. state your you know, name and address, please. Perfect. Okay, ready to go, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Brian Dunn. I'm the principal of the firm MBL Land Development and Permitting with offices at 5 Bristol Drive in the town of Easton. And with me this evening is uh, Tracy Duart, who are, is our Director of Engineering and the attorney for the project, Brianna Carrera. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Attorney Brianna Carrera with an office at 123 Broadway in Taunton. Uh, we're here tonight on behalf of the owners of the property, RK Realty Trust for the 95 Highland Street preliminary review. Um, I believe that the project engineers had submitted some preliminary plans for your review as well as some architectural renderings. Our proposal is for a gas station with a convenience store retail use um, with a restaurant and office uses. More particularly, you can see on the plan, we're proposing a 3,250 square foot retail convenience store and a 1,300 square foot restaurant with the offices that would be above on the second floor. We are within the business district. So our proposal would require a special permit from the zoning board for a motor vehicle light service or the gas station use and then also a site plan review with this honorable board. I believe some of the waivers potentially we would need um, pertain to the parking space sizes um, in reviewing the ordinance and well, the bylaws and the uh, regulations. I believe the town of Easton looks for a 10 foot by 20 foot space. We're seeking um, if the board's amenable to have nine feet by 18 feet for the spaces. Um, and we'd also like to have a discussion with the board in terms of open space. Um, just to see what the board would like to see here for this type of site for open space. Um, just your guidance with that. Um, but as again, as I mentioned, we're here for a preliminary review. We'd be happy um, to have your feedback and your guidance with this proposal and the proposed uses that we have. And I'd like to turn it over to Brian and Tracy if they would like to walk through the plan that they've developed for this site um, just in a little bit more detail. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Brianna. Uh, I did share the plan. Can everybody see that, Mr. Chairman and members of the board? Yes. All right. Yeah, so, well. so to the east of the frontage, uh, and we have frontage on Highland Street as well as Foundry Street. 
the exact physical address, address is 95 Highland Street and is an existing convenience store on this property at this signalized intersection. As you can see um, down inside the, oops, don't know why I did that. Oh, actually, that was pretty good, but we zoomed right into the intersection now. So that's yeah, so you can see the intersection. As you can see, we surveyed the uh, the whole intersection where the signals are and the, the pavement markings and so on and so forth. And then um, we also did a, a survey of the site. Let me get myself out of the way. So you can, you know, get a good idea of where the existing where the existing building is on the site and um, uh, where there's a bunch of parking in this area in this area here to gain access there's a um, a single re single home residency also attached uh, to this to this building so what we're trying to do is put in a, a gas station retail store roughly 3,250 square feet, a small little restaurant, you know, maybe a subway or uh, a sandwich shop or a coffee shop, no drive-through, and then office space on the second floor. You can see uh, the gas tanks in this area here, actually whether you fill, fill up, and then we put the underground tanks in this area here of the site. We, do, we did uh, some test pits over here where we were thinking of putting the septic system, but the soils didn't come back uh, very good uh, near the existing field. It's like in this area here. So it looks like we're gonna be putting the septic system on this side of the lot based on the soils and groundwater. Uh, we also did test pits for our proposed drainage areas. You can see those test pits as well. And uh, Stephanie was kind enough to get us some information on this uh, abandonment area of the of the right of way. So now this whole area here is part of our site that's in this area. Mm -hmm. so, so we'll be utilizing um, you know that area for landscaping and maybe some drainage. We're we're still looking at that. Yeah, As so you is know, that where people is that part like where people like currently kind of park sometimes if they kind of pull in and pull out to the side. That is correct. And then there's, there's also an existing catch base in this area that's connected uh, probably uh, either this way or this way. It was very hard to find it out in the field, uh, but there is an easement in this area for that, that catch basin that will ultimately show on the existing condition survey plan. So what we tried to do here is keep the gas station and the proposed use for the gas station out of this aquifer protection district. You can see everything is, is pretty much uh, to the east of that zone. And we're trying to put our drainage area, you know, in this area here in the back of the site. We also did test pits in that area too. We're closing a quite a large curb cut. I, I forget what the distance is, but we've got this huge curb cut here and actually a huge curb cut from here all the way to past uh, I think it's really over in here. It stopped somewhere in that vicinity. So we're we're trying to do some you know, reduction in the curb cuts and do some really good planning about making sure the throat width is the right the right width for this use, and also putting them on either sides of the of the lot in the right of ways, so they're not very close together. I think we did some distance checking and. Uh, I think Tracy came up with we're just over 300 feet apart, which is pretty ideal. So we do have handicapped spaces in this area here, sidewalk landscaping around the building and, um, you know, some concrete sidewalks in the front for the entrances. This is the concrete sidewalk. And I also, uh, we also submitted for your review and we tried to think about the, the residential use of this area, because we are surrounded by residents, except, uh, except for the wooded area up here and um, the Northeast Eastern Savings Bank that's uh, to the north 
on Foundry Street. So most of the abutters around us are residents. So if I could, I'm gonna just uh, minimize this for a second, Mr. Chairman. And then um, I wanna make sure I'm gonna stop sharing and then share again so you can see the architectural. So hold on a second. So we tried to come up with a, an architectural design. I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna give, give you the rendering first. So it's not the typical, everybody can see that? Yes. So it's really not the typical, I'm gonna to try to zoom in just a little bit. Is that a little bit clearer to everybody? That's good. Great. So it's not your typical, you know, mobile Hess or, you know, Cumberland Farms type of a canopy. It's a canopy with, you know, some faux uh, dormers on it, dormers on the building itself. Uh, that would be part of the office um, office area on the second floor. And you can see the three pumps that we're planning on, on uh, proposing underneath the canopy. You know, the canopy is was probably going to be as high as 14.6 or 14.8. Uh, we're working with the architect and a gas station uh, designer, uh, GPI, who uh, does these types of things all the time for Cumberland Farms. And they've put give, given us some input to uh, the heights of things and circulation and placement of tanks and so on and so forth. But what we're really here today is to try to get some input from you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board in regards to our, our layout, um, as well as the you know, proposed architectural style and design of this, this building which you know, kind of looks very colonial to me and I think would probably fit very well in the neighborhood and not be your typical you know, Cumberland Farms or Speedway or a Hess gas station where it's just a commercial building. And this looks you know, very residential to me, but that's why we're here. We did meet with Stephanie. She gave us some great advice in regards to you know, laying out the site as well as you know, coming up with some of these architectural designs and, and really put forward coming here and trying to present this at an early stage so we could get the input and then go to final design and come back and uh, you know, hopefully su uh, successfully get a site plan approval from you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Um, Robin, uh, Mickey, do you have any? comments, uh, suggestions for these people? Not necessarily on the, the drawing part, but in terms of the use, what, what are you guys thinking can fit inside of like a 1300 square foot um, restaurant space? Can you just give some examples? Just Yeah, well, that's what, I, that's what I said earlier. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a small little subway. Uh, it could be someone who wants to sell pastries or or donuts or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's very that's small scale. Very small scale. Maybe small scale. maybe eight seats, something like that. Something okay. very 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 small. Mm -hmm. So um, that was that was the intent. The rest of the area, the thirty two hundred and fifty, of course, is you know going to be a regular convenience store with with soda and you know snacks and things like that. Um, Kind of like what they're selling right now. What's there the now, right? Okay. Yes. Um, it, it, and the only the only comment I had, and just this is kind of a first blush in, impression. The the canopy above um, the uh, the gas um, dispensers, whatever mm -hmm. they're called, um, it just sort of looks bulky to me. And I'm not the I'm not an architect on on this on this board, um, but that's just something I was just kind of curious as to why you went in, in that direction in terms of the size and, and the shape of it. So the, the reasoning for this is that the client um, has, has built and is operating one of these in New Hampshire, like just like this. Yes. So, okay, so this is a pre-existing design that they were comfortable with and had seen yeah, they, they before. Gave us, yeah, they gave us some preliminary drawings that they used for the construction of a building up in, I think it was Nashua. New Hampshire, and it was, it's very successful. 
and it has that you know colonial look to it. Yes, it looks a little large on this view, um, you know, compared to the to the building, but that's that's the roof line. I mean, we can talk to the architect and see if there's a way of you know making it smaller. Um, but, but we're also you know at a very preliminary stage right now. So mm -hmm. your input, we can go back to the owners, we can go back to the architect, and and come up with some something that's. Uh, more palatable to you in, in regards to its bulkiness. So yeah, I, I guess I just wanted to make sure that it what you know there wasn't something structurally that required this design like that. If you're telling me that you guys can work on that and maybe make it a little more aesthetically pleasing, then I think that's good enough for my purposes tonight. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that as well. That it just seemed like that kind of jumped out. Whereas, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not an architect either, but yeah, so. And neither Robert nor I are architects and we both noticed that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I guess like you were saying, so the parking circulation is about the same, except for the entrances are smaller and located a little more. Yeah, if, you, if you'd like, I can go back to that, that um, plan. No, I mean, I think that made sense to me. I think, you know, when we looked at this, I don't know if it was it, was it with you, your group or someone else where um, there was, had been a gas station maybe suggested for this location? There was, um, they were proposing the existing operation Mm -hmm. was proposing adding diesel um, diesel oh. uh, tanks mm -hmm. and pumps. It didn't seem like as comprehensive as a kind of a, a, a plan. Or, or, you know, it, a, it, I result. think it yeah. only contemplated adding those additional pumps. Right. To it. Mm -hmm. I think it required variances as well for a can the canopy that they were trying to propose to, mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm not... And correct. I think I want to in reviews in reviewing the past decision. There were some variances involved. I want to say maybe with setbacks because of the canopy that was being proposed for those pumps. Yeah, that 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 is correct. What Brianna was saying that the uh, other application that was was denied uh, was asking for building setback relief as well, mm -hmm. and putting the building very very close to Foundry and mm -hmm. Highland Street. And as you can see on our site plans. We're well within the the setbacks of, of the of the area because we've got frontage on two streets. We've set that up. We've discussed that with Stephanie. We've discussed that with the Kevin, the building inspector. So we we feel that we're comfortable on how we've made the determination of the setbacks, as well as placement of the building on the lot, and and building the building or showing the building uh, within those setbacks and not asking for any any waivers from those kinds of things. We, like Brianna did say early on, we might ask for a waiver on the parking spaces mm -hmm. and some of the open space requirements. So we would like to see and hear from the board if those are something that you'd be willing to, to work with us on. And if yes, then that's great. If not, then we know we have to go, you know, kind of like back to the planning, planning stages of laying things out. And just to comment and um, clarify, so we actually meet the number of parking spaces that would be required. Um, it's just the size of each parking space that uh, we were proposing the nine by 18 as opposed to the 10 by 20. Correct. Thank you, Brianna. Yeah, we, we haven't really um, gone to the nine foot spaces, okay. but we have reduced parking. Um, you know, we do that quite frequently. Okay. Right, and in light of the fact that you are kind of keeping the other side with some sort of open space concept, you know, that might um, be a practice we could continue as long as it made sense for like the, you know, the actual use as far as, you know, reducing the actual number of parking spots. Okay. What do you think, Stephanie, just based on those uses and the... Um... I, yeah, um, I, I have other comments too. I think that we need to understand um, they're, they're proposing... Um, residential, right? No, we removed the residential. You, you removed the residential. Okay. Yeah, at, at, at our last meeting, in regards to um, concerns, uh, concerns by the by the town. Yeah, we, we I just want we, we we removed the residential component totally. And okay, only, so that was one of my comments. Office on the second floor. So the, so there's an office. So there aren't as many uses. So you have the the proposed restaurant, the office space, and then the um, the gas station, the filling station, 
Um, my, my one concerning question that I had raised when I met with, I mean, in addition to that one about apartments being, you know, right next to a gas station with, you know, those fumes and things. Um, it, but also is the traffic coming in and out. Mm -hmm. Remind me, um, Brian, will, are they going to have diesel? Filling there in is, all stations yes, today? Will, there, yes, there will be regular gas. There will be the three types of gas, um, economy, mid-level, premium, and there will be uh, one, uh, uh, there will be diesel as well. Mm -hmm. And so the new, the new pumps that are set up, we were told um, that they all will have the ability to have diesel at, at those locations. So um, in regards to traffic, if traffic is a concern uh, and uh, we can actually talk to the client about, you know, discussing what type of traffic study needs to be done in regards to this type of use here. Yeah, I think that the, both the traffic flow through the site and interacting with the office traffic. I mean, um, you want, we wanna make sure that everyone's safe who is using the site. You are talking about open space and you have drainage basins proposed. You're not proposing these as rain gardens or um, a constructed wetland. I know you're, this is still very preliminary, but um, it, would, it would be nice to see some vegetation and, and some landscaping around the area. And I think that you might be proposing that, um, yeah, you have proposed landscaping in that area that has been disused by the town. Yeah, so I mean, we normally we come up with a, a very extensive landscaping plan uh, mm -hmm. with trees, bushes and shrubs and grasses and lawns. Mm -hmm. So we can also look at seeing if that basin to the west of the building in the aquifer protection uh, can serve as a constructed wetlands or not, and see if that type of a design okay, is, right. is, 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 you know, is doable in that area. Like, like we said, is we're very, very preliminary here right now. So yes. we, we, we have the, the ability not to erase and go back, but we have the ability to think plan and then come up with some good ideas um, that will help out with these kinds of things and then do the plug and play and see if they work. If right. there's reasons that they don't work, we will tell you why they, they don't work. Yeah. So, so Peter, to answer your question about potentially reducing the parking, you know that's one of my pet things to do. Mm -hmm. So if we could reduce the park, some of the parking along the that corner of Foundry and Highland Street. I I think we should explore. The board should explore doing that. Yeah, and maybe just to kind of help it look a little bit better in the neighborhood. You know, could maybe make like yes. a nicer type of like post and rail fence along the the front or just things like that. Or... Yeah, it also would improve your ability. You know, you could probably keep your um, customers that are just coming in to use the filling station, you could circulate them just in that area instead of around too. Mm -hmm. So just a thought yeah. here. Okay, um, is anyone else, any other comments from the board? Or do you see any, do we have any hand raise, hands raised? I don't see any hands up. Uh, Mr. Carrickster just raised his hand. Okay. Good. Hi, Dale Terrester, 21 South Street. I may be unfamiliar with the nomenclature, but to the extent that signalized was referring to a traffic signal and to the extent that the reference was to the Highland and uh, intersection there, um, there had been a temporary traffic light. I don't believe there is a traffic light there now. I think that was part of the detour. Uh, so I just wanted to pass that along. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that, thanks. that was my reflection as well. And I figured we'd talk about that at the next meeting, but good point. Um, yeah, so that kind of just comes down to the trail traffic situation where, you know, there will be some traffic studies required and um, based on the results of the traffic studies, then um, 
we'll do do our own plug and play there and um and you know see what we can do to make a good project. Good. Thank you. I like the way you're thinking. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Um so Stephanie, we don't really continue with this. We just um Right. So let's see the next meeting. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I, I wanted oh, yeah. to ask uh, if uh, Tracy had anything to add. Oh, yeah. Tracy, do you have anything to add? No, I don't have anything to add at the moment. We're going to take these um, notes from this meeting and we'll integrate it into our design. Um, just want to point out we have done some test pits with Board of Health already, so that's underway, and we've done some drainage test pits as well. So we just got to start plug and chug and getting to the buy. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we can continue this if you think you might want to come back with some, with anything before your actual, um, you know, submittals. What? How do you feel? You want to handle this? I, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, I think we have enough information right now uh, yeah. to discuss with our team and our mm -hmm. client, and um, you know, forge forward with a full site, set of site plans. And um, I'm sure that you'll be pleasantly pleased with our package of information and our design. And we will take into advisement all of the items that we discussed uh, this evening. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your yeah. time. Bye, bye. Happy time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice to move over to the agenda. All right, um, so as we discussed, we're going to um, postpone MB the MBTA multifamily by right zoning district discussion um, to the next meeting when hopefully we have the one or two more board members in attendance. Um, so that leaves us with really one more kind of type of a planning item, the, uh, the variance ZBA request for comment variance 235-2. 253 Purchase Street. So this was a variance from the some of the um, the lot requirements um, due to a kind of a historical um, situation on Purchase Street. Hold on, and I will share my screen. Not like a historical structure, but just a you know, something that happened in the past that kind of encumbered these lots, I, I suppose. Oops, sorry. So, so the letter indicates that the number 249 um, was located like directly on the property line. That's yes. The so they're proposing this new lot line. And like the same family sort of owned these two properties and however it happened was such that um, 249 ended up right on the property line. Mm -hmm. And so that, which was, that's actually, well, well no, neither are really conforming lots, right? And Correct. Except that right now there's only well you have um, it looks like they both have the frontage to be mm -hmm. a conforming lot. It's probably the size. I don't see mm -hmm. the square ah here we go thirty two thousand three hundred. So it's the square mm -hmm. footage. They're undersized lots by current zoning. Mm -hmm. So in one sense, they're making lot B less conforming than it currently, it, you know, they're increasing the non-conforming conform, yeah. conformance. Yeah, and they're reducing one aspect of the non-conformance for the existing for lot A. So they're just kind of shifting it around. But on the other hand, even the two lots combined are only about 59,000. Correct. Well, yeah. 60,000 square feet. And when I looked at these there, I think they're consistent with the lots within the area. Oops, sorry. 
yeah, I mean, it kind of, it's kind of like to me, like it's regardless of whether or not, or whether the 249 was built right on the property line, it's more like, okay, well, if there are substandard lots, um, then, you know, at this point where we are in zoning, you know, should we just, um, a variance is appropriate to allow people to build on a substandard lot, forgetting about the, you know, the, the lot line issue with the other lot. So, um, Rob, uh, Nikki, do you have any opinion on this variance request? I mean, I'm in, I'm in favor of it. If it's going to make it easier to build something there, because there's, mm -hmm. you know, this, this building is encroaching over the line. I, I think that makes sense. No. That's what I got from the memo. I, I mean, no. that, that seems to make sense to me and, and seems reasonable. It's almost like after I read the memo, then I was like, okay, well, that's why they need a variance. Whereas before I was like, well, they're just trying to build a house on a substandard lot, right? I mean. Yeah, I it's not the most detailed of memos mm -hmm. <laughs> we've seen, but it, it, what I took away from it is that the fact that it's kind of over the line mm -hmm. necessitates some sort of uh, the variance request. Okay, for, wait, wait, that, yeah, right. So then in my mind, though, that would be a variance for the 249 on the left. But is the variance just for 249 or is it also to allow lot B to be a buildable lot without um, adequate um, area? Stepping so the in, in essence, it is to allow both lots. Um, it's a variance for both lots because if this is, this is in common ownership, then it's considered one lot. Oh, the merger doctrine. Yeah. Merger. Yep. So, and uh, Mickey, we don't so actually the really make a decision of here. We just, um, yeah. So I just explained to Mickey that we don't, we don't make a decision. We just kind of, this is for the Board of Appeals to decide. We just make a recommendation, if, yeah. either the yes, no, or no comment. So it's not um, like this is right. It's not really our thing. It's the Board of Appeals thing, but we do just make a comment if we choose. Oh, cool. Thank you. It seems in character. Yeah, I'm I'm for it. I'll make a make a motion to recommend Stetson. Second, Wolf. All in favor? Deshane, aye. Stetson, aye. Wolf, aye. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, that was not a that was more of a motion to recommend, right? So we did that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Uh, do we have some um, meeting minutes? You know, I did not get to that point of the folder, but we can. Um, does anyone else do you want to look at them, or did anyone read the minutes and um, have any issues with them? Well, I skimmed them. I thought they looked fine. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes, Stetson. Second, Wolf. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Um, Deshay and I. Wolf. Aye. Stetson. Aye. Okay, motion passes, the minutes are approved. And back to the agenda, I think that's, well, let's see. Who are, and I guess the acting chair um, recap there is that our long-term um, long member, planning board member and uh, chair Greg Strange has resigned. So right now, Stephanie, we have, we only have uh, four members, right? And then I assume the it's the time of year when the board of selectmen um, appoints uh, any any vacancies in like around the, in June. Well, right now you have five members. With mm -hmm. oh well, yeah, well we have five. Yeah, now Mickey's back, right? Yeah, so right. we have five right now. Uh, and, well, right, and um, Mickey's currently the alternate. Mm -hmm. um, so. Right, there was a vacancy to fill. Yeah. As of now, we're only down by, right, yeah. We're only down by one because then we have five for, you know, for our regular meetings. Right. All right, and um, and I think what we talked about, unless you have any idea, other ideas, we'll be I, reorganized um, at the next meeting, assuming we have a really like at least four of us or so, or, or what? Um, what's the procedure for that when a board member resigns? I, you should do a vote. Mm -hmm. 
or at least an interim chair. Mm -hmm. All right, then why don't we do, I'd say we can see who's here at the next meeting and we'll do it at the first agenda item, right? Yeah. Give everyone else, anyone that wants to join, a chance to um, chance to attend. Um, and then, you know, Robert did a great job at that last meeting when, when <laughs> Ray and I were here. I'll, so. be, I'll, be, I'll be nominating you, Peter. <laughs> you look a little more poised at the, um, the, the MC uh, part of it, but um, all right. <laughs> Well, anyways, um, that's that's all for a chair update. We're gonna address the board leadership at the next meeting. Um, so with that, um, Stephanie, are there other planning director updates? I do have an update. Oh, I just okay. wanted to let the board know, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that an enforcement um, notice was issued for the lot 11 at Weber Farm um, being out of compliance and needing to be brought into compliance. Late last week, um, we were made aware that the um, developer is going in and appears to be bringing it into compliance. Mm -hmm. The siding material is being removed. Uh, the garage doors have been removed. So um, we're keeping an eye on that, but it looks like that um, is moving forward in the right direction. That's good news. Yeah. Yep. I think they did it. I caught a little bit of that when I was watching the um, the other parts of the meeting that I missed, and it seemed like it went. Yeah. Um. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I. Um. Someone had their hand raised, and they just disappeared. So. In that case, all right. Um. It's the time of the night when we resign, unless anyone else has anything else to bring up. Motion to adjourn, Stetson. I can wolf. Uh, all in favor? Stetson? Aye. Mickey? Oh, aye. Oh, wolf, sorry. Um, Deshane? Aye. All right. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. All right. I have one Wait. last question before we go, Peter. Um, can you see the other participants? I do, I'm not sure. I think we make uh -huh. Greg a co host, and that's why he can see, but I just want to make sure we have it all set up for the next meeting. Oh, can I see the participants? Well, I can see them. Let me see if I can, like, I don't know, Joe's here. Let's see if I can. So you could, field. could you see if when people raise their hands? Oh, yeah, I can see when they raise their hand, but in Perfect. case something went wrong with your um, Zoom, I wouldn't have the control to promote them and things like that. So right. Host, right. Right. So I'll see if we can, we can change that. We had tried that with Greg and it just didn't work one time, but mm -hmm. yeah, we can do that uh, because, yep. Okay. Awesome. Right. Thanks. That was it. See you guys. Good night, everybody.